Coming up on this episode, I'll talk about finding your why, my experience with it so far, and what I think is a few tips on how you can find your why yourself. Because after all, we're all trying to figure out what we're here for. So let's get into it. What's going on beautiful people? This is the Perspective Chasing Podcast and I'm your host John. On this episode I want to talk about finding your why. Now, finding your why is going to be different for everybody. But I'll start this off with probably the most universal truth. Which is you're never going to find it if you don't start looking. Now for me, starting this podcast made me start to reflect a lot and... I think I'm figuring out my why a lot more. But there's a few things I've figured out along the way. And I guess that's what I'm going to share this episode. The first is going to be times have changed. So where I was growing up and the things I was interested in and the the things I enjoyed, they weren't necessarily things that were going to make you money and everything else. Whereas these days, things like that can make you money. So there was a massive kind of, what's the word? Like a deterrent from pursuing your interests and everything else with as much vigor as you would a a normal career or a job where you've kind of got some form of security. But the thing is, nowadays, money's made in a plethora of different ways so you're not really constricted to such norms anymore but to tie it straight back to the first point if you don't start looking for those ways to turn your interests your passions your hobbies and everything else into things that make you money or make you able to live the life that you want to live money aside whatever like unless you're pursuing the life that you want to be living why do any of it at all so finding out what you enjoy and how you can capitalize on that for the better and not like i've done previously in my life where i made my hobby my career and zapped all the joy out of it like there's there's doing it and then there's doing it the right way and I guess for me, being a personal trainer wasn't what I was cut out to be for the build and end all of it. Like, for me, training was something that I found a lot more personal and I like to keep it that way. But if I didn't go through that journey of becoming a trainer and had that experience, I'd have probably always thought, oh, I'll make a good trainer and da 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 da. But yeah, I'll make a good training partner, but eh. I'm a bit more stubborn and selective to be a trainer for everybody and anybody, at least where I am in my life at the minute. But that's not to say that there weren't things that was learned there and everything else. So it's contributed to my why over time, but inevitably it's always kind of revolved around me, the same thing. So now looking back, When I went to college, I studied mechanics because I wanted to know how things worked. When I I got into security and I was observing people and how kind of behavior works and I kind of always had an interest in psychology and the human body and how everything works and how everything's connected. And I'm slowly realizing that maybe that is my why, but there's no way to necessarily pursue that. The thing is, there's no way unless I make the way. So like there's all of these different fields now that people are looking into and this area of life, that area of life. But it all intersects and everything in life is connected. So unless you look at the, everything as a whole, you're never going to understand it. And that's what interests me. And finding that out has taken a while. Like I've sat here and said that I don't know 
what I want to do or what my why is or whatever else. And I still can't tell you that's 100% my why. But it's something that looking back over my nearly 30 years of life now, it's something that I've I've always been interested in. When I was a kid, I was interested in the human body and how it works and insects and plant life and this, that and everything else. And even as an adult, like my interests always kind of revolve around how things work, regardless of their nature. So taking the time to look at life now and slow down and go, okay, cool. There's what the world's asking of me and what the world needs me to be. And then there's what I want to be. So personally, my approach, I'm meeting life on its terms. And I'm saying, cool, I'll do everything that I need to do. I'll work and do this and do that. But once that is done, I'll pursue what I want to pursue and I'll do what I want to do. And that's kind of helped me realize my why again. So I've started to read and pursue my own interests because I don't have so many distractions and so many things pulling on me so much. So again, I can connect with my own thoughts, look back on my own life. And it's interesting to say the least. And some of it's foggy and that's that's another aspect and a whole other thing to get into but the reality is like it takes time to figure these things out some people may wake up and have a light bulb moment and realize what they want to pursue for their whole life some people might blindly pursue it and not even know that they're pursuing it i think that's kind of what i've been doing well, like I always know that I have an interest in how things work, but I've never had a way to connect it because there's never been a way to connect it, but there'll never be a way to connect it unless I make a way to connect it or unless I look for a way to connect it and find out that somebody else has already done it. That may happen too. But again, you have to look. Ties back to the first point. <laughs> I'm doing well at that today. So the thing is, it is that long journey but now to get into the other part of it is the distractions if you all meet in life where it needs to be and then you're not taking that time to look for your for your why or for your interest or you're just switching off and just disconnecting from life you're not then looking you're not then going to find it so you have to realize how much you're being distracted, where your attention is. I think we're all guilty of saying that we don't have enough time. But then how many people can check their screen time on multiple devices and see hours and hours and hours of time? So it's not that we necessarily don't have the time. It's just the time that we do have, we're misusing. And definitely from, pers from personal experience, if you cut back on the screen time slowly, eventually you do feel a void, but then you fill that void with something productive and something beneficial. And over time that helps you reconnect with yourself, or at least it has me. And again, like everything is connected. Once you start to connect and slow down and you're distracted less by other storylines or living vicariously through this or that where you're literally just distracted from your own life and your own existence and your own development and growth to actually reconnect with yourself sit there and actually find out what you find interesting what your character is about and develop that instead of sitting there watching countless shows on countless streaming services like there's no real urgency to watch that stuff it's always going to be there there's going to be a time in our lives where we can't get around and we can't do the things that we currently take for granted that's the time to enjoy the shows and slow down and everything else not while you're able to experience life get out there and do things and there's so much to do 
do you really have to sit there watching what somebody else has done? Why not go out and do something yourself? Right? Again, I think that's probably a problem of the times. We all get caught up in these cycles and think that what everybody else is doing is what we need to do, but that's very rarely true. So take the time to slow down and figure out what is your why? Why do you want to do these things? But realize you have to slow down to do that. And when you do that, look at what you constantly come back to. What is the commonality in your life? If it's every time you feel down or whatever else you end up getting into music or you end up getting into art or whatever it is. Take the time to find a way to connect with it and build that connection over time because there'll be a way you can capitalize on it and live a better life by bringing it into the fold instead of keeping it on the back burner. But it don't come unless you start looking and it won't come unless you take action. But it's always going to be down to you. It's your why after all. Anyway, I'm going to wrap the episode up there. The seed for this episode is going to be try to ask somebody else what their why is and see what their response is. See how they handle it and then sit with yourself and ask yourself how you handle it. And you should never compare yourself to other people, but just for a little bit of personal perspective, see where you approach the question from and see where they approach the question from. It may be an interesting insight. Anyway, all the best and I'll catch you on the next one.